Welcome to this video on for loops. This is assuming that you've watched the previous video on while loops, which are slightly different from for loops as we've seen. Now just a quick recap, how do we use loops? We looked at the fact that if you were asking somebody, and we're talking about real life, if you were asking somebody to hammer a nail in and you wanted this done a hundred times, you could keep repeating each instruction, saying hit the nail once, hit the nail twice, hit it again, hit it again, or if you knew the amount of times that you want the nail to be hit, just say, I'll hit it a thousand times and then stop. Or, you know, start hitting it and then stop at a hundred once you've reached a hundred times. And this is very similar to how a for loop works. We looked in the last video at the fact that you have while loops and for loops. And while loops are slightly different in which they have a stopping condition, they're called condition controlled loops and they also you know have some sort of variable which is going up to work towards the condition but a for loop is one of my favorite types of loops in a sense it's very simple and it just it basically you use a for loop when you know the number of iterations the number of times that you want to loop through so if you know you want to print hello a hundred times well then you just use a for loop and you specify that you want to start at 1, stop at 100. You can be more specific and we're going to look at loops in much more detail as you get more advanced and delve more into Python, but you can be very specific with for loops and do all kinds of things. So how is a for loop different? It's a count controlled loop rather than a condition controlled loop, which means you use it when you have a known number of times that you want to loop round in advance. So a for loop is a count control loop, that's your keyword. Let's have a look at some examples. Now this on the left is an example of a for loop. And as you can see over here, this is the output of the for loop. So you can see it says for i in range, and then it says 0 to 105, and then it says print i. Now you can see what the output is, so from the output you might be able to guess what this for loop is doing. So let's analyse it. Now I've just typed in for i. Now i could, it could be anything, you could type in x or y, but we're using i. It's referring to the first, your starting point, so it's saying for the variable i, which is going to start at 0 and stop at 10, go up by increments of 5, and you can see it's, it's gone up to 0, 5, so say I wanted it to go up to 100 and go up each time by 5, you can see that that actually works. Ignore the task, I'm just using the trinket. So we could do something slightly more simple and more obvious. I could simply say for i in range, start at 1 and go up to 10. And it does. I don't have to specify because the default is it would, it would go up by 1. Um, what if I wanted it to go up to 20? Like a two times table or go, go up by 1 and go up each time by, by 2, producing all the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, it would do that. Do the same thing for 3, and you get the idea. So your for loop, at its, in its very simplest form, is simply when you know how much the range that you want to actually use to produce an output. So I could just say even that. Don't forget the colon at the end. And this is going to start, so we have a variable called i which is starting. By default it would start at 0 if we don't specify. So it goes from 0, goes all the way up to 9. If I wanted to print numbers from 1 to 10, then I would have to specify the start and the stop. Here's another example. Now this example that we we looked at a similar thing, it's just starting at 5 and stopping at 10. Feel free to pause each video, look at the code, and then read the explanation that comes with it. 
Now this is slightly different. I'm using a simple, straightforward for loop, but over here I've used the end command, and this simply just means that I'm allowing the print printing not to be done by default to each line, but rather printing each eye next to each other. This is quite useful, as you'll see as we go along. It's just a useful thing to know. So again, feel free to pause, try it yourself, and you'll come across it in the tasks. This is also very important. Again, we have the same thing. We have begin and end, but this time, as you can see, we're going backwards, and you can do that. You can choose to go up by two or three or any number you choose, or you can go down, and that for that you simply use the minus two. Here's an example of printing something other than numbers. You can print anything. As we saw, you could print the word hello, or you could print a star. This is going to print ten stars. This, using this end command, as you see, it just simply prints the ten stars, but it says end, don't go on to the next line, print it on the same line. Try it yourself and see how it works. Here's a challenge. This is a for loop, and this is quite quite a difficult challenge really, but you have a range of different for loops which are producing five stars and five rows of five stars each. Would you be able to get rid of the repetition? Whenever you see something being repeated, it means you should be able to really condense it down. Would you be able to condense it down? And uh, if you've read the hint, it, may, it would involve having one loop inside another, which is quite difficult. This would be the solution. Now, if I was you, I would pause the program here, try it yourself, and then see if you can come up with the solution. It's in, very satisfying when you can actually solve a problem yourself. We've not worked with lists yet, and as soon as you go through the Solve and Learn series uh, on later stages, we will look at lists in great detail. But if you're super keen, you might want to have a look at this example too. This is a random list which contains different elements in it, such as one, shoe, five, moon, cat, etc. And this is a for loop which is printing all the elements in the list. Incredibly useful, as you'll see. Again, as we looked at in the last video, using loops is one of the most important things that you'll do as you program. Whether you're making an application like Facebook or an app or a game, you're going to be using loops all the time. A good place to start at this point, after you've watched the video, is to go through all the tasks, see if you can solve them, and finally come to the final challenge to see if you can actually write a for loop for yourself. It's useful to go through some of the examples that we went through in the video, this video and this presentation, so you can actually think about typing it yourself, experimenting with how a for loop works before you start attempting the challenges.